Here is a perfectly normal picture of a person's face. It's just upside down. But other than that, it's completely normal. Or is it? Let's see what happens when I turn the face the right way up. Okay, so now it looks a bit strange. And this is the Thatcher effect. Let's find out more. The original effect was demonstrated in 1980 by Peter Thompson of York University in the UK. It's called the Thatcher effect because the first photograph to be used showing the effect was one of the then British Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher. The effect shows a picture of a person's face upside down, but the eyes and mouth are the right way up. When viewing the upside down image, nothing looks amiss, but when the photograph is turned the right way up again, it becomes clear that the eyes and mouth are wrong. Since then, a number of celebrities from Adele to Kanye West have all been Thatcherized. But why does this effect work? Why does the face look seemingly normal when viewed upside down, but then strange when turned the right way up? Well, it all has to do with the way that we process faces. A large part of our brain's processing power is given over to recognising faces which is probably why we see faces in places that they don't really exist. This means that humans are amazing at distinguishing faces. We have to be, as it allows us to recognise our friends and our enemies, and in an evolutionary sense this is an important skill that allows for altruism, and allows us to know those who cooperate with us so we can repay any favours at a later date. So why does this fascinating effect occur? As with a lot of situations where we're trying to explain how our brains work, we don't completely know, but there are a few possibilities. The first suggests that we expect objects to be a certain way up, the top of objects we expect to be at the top of our visual field. In the upside down face, this isn't the case. We normally would expect a chin to be at the bottom of our visual field, but it isn't. This then makes it difficult to notice the changes to the face. The second focuses on the actual expression. If we look at a smiling face, there are certain face shapes that we would expect to find, especially those around the mouth and the eyes. In an inverted face, we have difficulty interpreting the expression, and so we have difficulty in noticing the distortions. These explanations are interesting, but don't fully describe all the observed effects. The most likely explanation suggests that we have a mental model of familiar objects that we use to compare with what we see to make sure if they look right or not. Once we've recognised an object by comparing it to our mental model, we can then look to individual features to analyse those. We see upside down faces very rarely, and so we don't have a mental model of these. This means that we now have to look at the individual components of the face to see if they look right. The mouth looks normal to us, as do the eyes. It's only when the picture is turned the right way round that we can now compare it to our mental model and we can clearly see that some of the aspects don't look right. This explanation also ties in with rotational changes. As I rotate the face back round the right way up, there comes a point for me it's about here, where the distortions become noticeable. Before that point the face looks fine, and it's only after that point that it becomes a recognisable effect. Even though I know that this is a Thatcherized face, rotating it back upside down again, after a certain point I'm fooled by the rotational change, even though I know it's there. It's also strange that Thatcherized and non-Thatcherized faces look normal when upside down even when they're presented together side by side. Both of these faces look normal, even though the one on the right has been Thatcherized. In actual fact, it may well be that the real answer is more complex than any one of these explanations. We expect normally that objects are illuminated from above, and so shadows form in particular ways. In the Thatcherized face, the shadows look like the face is being lit from above, and so we interpret the face as looking normal. When the face is returned to its normal orientation, the shadows are now wrong. This however wouldn't explain the more pronounced shadows associated with the nose. This effect has also been investigated in people who suffer from a condition called prosopagnosia. These people can't identify faces, but are still able to recognise facial emotions. 
people with prosopagnosia are much quicker to recognise the distortions of a Thatcherized face. Interestingly, this effect has also been investigated in upside down writing. This is clearly an upside down letter E. Or is it? This effect seems to have very interesting effects on the letters that have symmetrical variants within the alphabet. For instance, we can read these upside down words with a little bit of effort as long as the words aren't too long. I haven't been able to find any specific research papers covering this, but I'm surmising that this may be due to the fact that when we read normally, we see and recognise words as a whole rather than as constructs of individual letters. In upside down writing, we now have to work out the individual letters and put the words together, so long words are much more difficult. If we try this with words containing a number of certain letters, the task becomes even more complicated, as can be seen in this example here. The letters D and B, Q, G and P can be difficult for us because upside down they look similar to other letters. Again, I'm surmising here, I'm no psychologist and so if anyone has access to research papers on this phenomenon, I'd love to hear from you with the real answers. And just before we finish, I make regular trips into outer space, inner space and through time. If you enjoyed this video, then why not try out some more, and maybe then subscribe. My space and time machine is bigger on the inside, so there's plenty of room for everyone. The Thatcher effect has also been demonstrated to occur in rhesus monkeys. They are similarly fooled by pictures of Thatcherized rhesus monkey faces. This isn't just interesting in its own right, but also helps us to understand the evolution of face recognition in humans. As I alluded to at the beginning of the video, face recognition is an important aspect of human cognition. Humans are social animals, and for much of our evolutionary history, we've lived in social groups. Over time, our social groups have got larger and larger, and now, thanks to the internet, our potential number of contacts is larger than at any time in our history. Being able to recognise faces allows us to recognise individual people. This then allows for the development of altruism. Altruism occurs when individuals help each other. If I have more food than I need, I could share some with someone who doesn't have enough food, helping us both to survive. This also means that the entire group that I live in has a greater chance of surviving as a whole. Altruism, however, isn't a string-free gift. The understanding is that if I help you, if the need arises in the future, you'd also help me. This means that it's important for me to be able to recognise those who I've helped and those who owe me a favour. If you renege on a deal, I'm not going to help you in future. In fact, we may love to gossip so much because it allows us to tell others of these untrustworthy individuals, but I've already made a video about that. Ok, so that's it for this curious and interesting effect. In making this video I used a number of sources including a very interesting article from the BBC's Bang Goes The Theory that I'm quite upset is actually no longer on telly, and so I'll put links to those in the video description. So for now, and until we go travelling again, thank you for watching. <laughs>